Hello everybody, Sebastian Lacido here and welcome to Headlines and Prophecy. Today I want to take up the unprecedented changes in direction, policy, and leadership in the United States. It's, it's going to have a very negative impact on the church, the body of Christ, and our ability uh, not only to communicate the message of Christ, but also to live the message of Christ. When you look at uh, what's happened, uh, it's almost prophetic. It is prophetic. We're going to look at how it ties into prophecy. But first, I want to take a look at our country. I want to look at what, what just happened, uh, what's going on right now. Uh, when you understand history and you understand uh, nations, the powers that run a nation make the rules. And so when you look back in history, why was slavery legal? Because the powers that governed us said it was legal. Why was Jim Crow legal? Why were lynchings legal? Because the powers that were in place were able to make those things legal. Why was apartheid legal? I mean, under Nazi Germany, the powers that led Nazi Germany decided that it was legal to round up Jews, to put them in ghettos and concentration camps and execute them without prejudice. And, and so... We in our nation, we've always had two opposing sides. We've always had a two-party system, pretty much. And those opposing sides had a couple of things. They both, they both had Christian values. They both had the desire to work within the framework of the Constitution. And so both parties, even though they had liberal components and conservative components, were able to get together and compromise on something in the middle never really blowing up the system. They, they, they brought about compromise, and then we lived under that compromise. There was a little bit of this and a little bit of that. We came, Donald Trump came in, and naturally he, he began to be the trumpet, the voice for conservatism, Judeo-Christian values, and other things that we Christians believed and wanted in our lives. And he was such a dominant force and such a, such a uh, such so aggressive in his nature that in it that our voices our hearts were lined up with his and so we gravitated and cleaved to him and he through many unfortunate circumstances some of them could have been fraud others are lying cheating others uh, truth didn't matter right we had a blog on that a couple weeks ago that truth really doesn't matter you can just indict somebody without any you can impeach them without any hearing or any evidence. And so we, we moved to this new structure where there was so much hate on one side for one man that we all got caught up in it. And so we became the Confederacy. When Donald Trump blew up in the public eye and the you know Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were elected, they brought in their agenda. And with that came the Senate and the House. So essentially, right now, they are the leadership. And what we've seen over the last, just, just since the election, we've seen executive order after executive order completely erase and change everything that Donald Trump had set up and, and we had been living in for the past uh, years. And, uh, you know, we find ourselves with, I wrote some down here, uh, just some of the executive orders were that girls uh, now, a, a boy could wear a wig and go into a girl's gym, locker room, can go into their bathroom. Uh, we're back to where Obama started. The, the 1776 Commission, which wanted to teach our children uh, about the Constitution and our founding fathers, we see that it was eliminated and they're implementing the 1619 Agenda, which looks at our history through the lens of slavery. We, you know, we, uh, the other side preaches unity and conformity, but it, it's not. It's a conspiracy, and it's not a conspiracy theory. It is a conspiracy. They came in with both guns loaded, both barrels loaded. They began to redo and reset and recast the direction of the nation and, and, and do it immediately. They have the power to change things, many things. I mean, there's some things that they're not going to be able to do because it takes a super majority or it takes a, it takes a, a, a majority. And so there, there are still are some voices, but what we're seeing by executive action is the implementation of what I believe is the, is the global reset 
which is the structure for Antichrist to walk into. It's globalism and several other things. But here's the thing we want to talk about today. I want to talk about where we are because uh, our voices are being muted. Uh, we're being canceled. I mean, essentially, the whole 80, 90, 100 million of us that think conservative, that believe in the Bible, believe in, in individual rights, our voices are being censored, our, our, our programs are being censored, muted, uh, they're being terminated, they're being suspended. Uh, they suspended the President of the United States in, in his Twitter account. Just think of that for a second. A, a single company did that. And so we're, we're now faced with uh, having to deal with censorship, having to deal with, uh, with uh, being an enemy. We're almost like the Confederacy in our own country. I mean, who would ever thought Make America Great Again would be a slogan that would bring a riot, would bring you know, violence toward you? But here we sit today, and we sit here today for many different reasons. We can point the finger at, 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 at things, and we can, we can try to, uh, try to uh, think about how we're going to change this. It's a very slippery slope because uh, we're, we're not seeing the voice of opposition. We're not seeing a great pushback. Um, and I, I'm, I'm fearful that that without a voice, uh, things are going to break up. I want to read a, a scripture to you uh, that that'll that'll show you that this was anticipated by God. Um, and I've read it several times in our, our blogs. But here it says, "Why do the nations rage?" Psalm two, verse one. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves. That's the leaders of nations set themselves. And the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. So the kings of the earth are, are leaders. The rulers are the rulers of the seven pillars of any society. And that would be family. That would be religion, uh, government, business, arts, and entertainment. And uh, so these are the media. So these pillars of society... Uh, are you know in any society? If you go back to the 1800s, you know it'd be uh, horseback, right? And 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 nailing the news in the town square, or somebody trumpeting it in the town square, right? And so there's all these pillars, but the Bible says that the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Jesus, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's Jehovah against Jesus and against His anointed. That's us. So they. They're conspiring together against us. And here's their conspiracy. Let us break their bonds in pieces. In other words, let us break them in pieces. The things that hold them together, let them be broken in pieces. And let's cast away their cords from us. Let's cast away their cords from us. Well, who's us? It's them. And so they want to cast us away from them. They want us out of the way. They don't want our voices heard. Because our way of life is completely opposite of their way of life. Uh, we, we want individual rights. We want freedoms. We want the ability to, to worship God and to proclaim God. And our great nation has always given us that ability. Well, now we're in a place where the leaders of this nation, the president and the executive branch and the two houses of Congress, have essentially... Uh, put in place processes and controls and are allowing the cancellation of our voices. Joe Biden comes in and says he wants unity and wants to make compromise and wants to be the president of all of us, but he's not bringing unity. What he's doing is he's bringing conformity to this conspiracy, to open borders, to drive us into a one world government, to impose regulations and sanctions. There's no rhyme or reason to half of what he's done so far. There's no rhyme or reason to break apart what, what he did in the oil industry, shutting down the, 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 the pipeline coming out of Canada. There's no, all he's going to do is drive prices up. All he's going to do is hurt American citizens. But it, it, but it leads to an end, and that end is to bring us into a one-world system. So, so, you know, prophetically, this is supposed to happen in all nations. 
we didn't particularly want it to happen on our watch. I mean, I didn't, you know, and I prayed for President Trump. I believed that, you know, he God can make a way where there was no way. Unfortunately, today, he's not our president. I don't know what the future holds. I, I haven't had a prophetic word on what the future holds. I All I know is here I am with you today, and we have to figure this out. And the thing that we need to do is threefold. Number one, we need to uh, we need to have voices teaching, preaching, understanding eschatology and end times because this is one of the signs that comes very close to his return. Whether it's five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years, or forty years from now, there are people listening to this that will be alive for that. That's number one. We need to get under voices. We need to get in position to learn about what's coming and to try and understand it because there's lots of grace, lots of mercy, lots of peace. Second Peter chapter 1 says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. So the knowledge brings peace because we have understanding that this didn't cast God by surprise. This is, you know, if this is part of the plan, then we need to understand it as being part of the plan. You know, the second thing we need to do is that not only do we, do we need to get the knowledge, but we need to help expedite and expand that knowledge. Uh, unfortunately, children, your children, your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, uh, you know, students are going to be forced into uh, the education system, the 1619 culture, the transgender culture, the, the uh, sexual orientation culture. He's He's going to eliminate uh, even that that uh, uh, children under 18 years old can decide their own, you know, sexual preference. This isn't fiction. I'm not talking fiction. This is happening. So we need to we need to educate our kids. We need to educate our grandkids. We need to take control of the hearts and minds that we can touch, so that we can implement our voice because they're not going to let us implement our voice in mass. We have to do it. We have to do it in our churches. We have to do it at our kitchen tables. We have to do it uh, within our community. We have to give the, uh, the opposing message uh, so that kids, uh, adults, can understand the truth so the truth can free them. And third is we have to prepare ourselves spiritually the Bible says that those that do know their God will be strong and do exploits. We can't be passive in our Christianity anymore. It was easy. It was easy under the, the, the U.S. structure for us to be passive in our Christianity. We have to live our Christianity. We have to be bold and be able to stand under, under a headwind of those opposing us. I mean, when you think about this, our nation is predominantly labeled Christians. In other words, most of our country, probably 80% or more, still label themselves as a Christian. And, and what's the difference between us who have Judeo-Christian values and, and want to live under the structure of the Bible and those that are labeled in Christianity only? Well, you know, Joe Biden can go to church all he wants. So can Kamala Harris. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, their Christianity doesn't look at the word of God, doesn't look at the Bible. And therefore, they're able to implement policies. And they think they're right. They, they're, they're, they think they're right in what they're doing. But they're implementing policies that are in direct opposition of God, direct opposition of God's word. And, and so we need to take that ownership because the way we change our government is to change the hearts and minds of people. And the way we change the hearts and minds of people is through you and I and our churches and our community teaching them the word of God, teaching them that God will judge based on his word, teaching them that God is real and that there is a downside to disobedience to him. Unfortunately, as we continue down this road, we leave ourselves open to God's judgment. And, and, and by, by, by not turning this around, I mean, everybody's focused on changing things in 2022. Let me just say that, you know, I believe there was fraud in the election. However, it still took awful lot of labeled Christian votes to put this agenda in, in action. 
And a, a vast majority of these votes came not from people that really looked at the issues. They just hated Donald Trump. And now that we've given reins to this group, this group will now turn Christianity inside out and upside down as far as they can go. They can't go any farther than you and I having the faith and the knowledge to stop them at our front door and not allow it to invade our house, our community, or our church. So it's time to wake up. It's time to begin to live the Word of God, to learn it, and to walk in it. We're coming to a time, this may have all happened to bring us to our knees, frankly. I mean, listen to me, and I, I'm not trying to be judgmental. We have watched for decades now the killing of babies in the womb. We have stood by while 60 million or 70 million babies have been killed in the womb. We have watched as they have allowed the transgender and the, and the sexual orientation that is not biblical to be implemented in every facet of society. We have allowed this on our watch. We have votes. This country was supposed to be run by the people and for the people. And so we need to change hearts and minds. That's how we stop this. At least we stop it at our front door and we stop it in our family. As the prophet said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Joshua said that. So we need to get engaged, guys. I am starting two other ministries. I am, uh, I am starting a ministry function called What I Really, what I really Think, which I, right now in this, uh, in this message to you, it's public, and, and therefore I, I do not lay it out full throttle. Uh, we've been censored four times. We've been uh, ter ter you know, suspended twice. Uh, I mean, so we've, as small as we are, we've, uh, we've felt it. But I'm starting a new ministry. It's going to a new ministry service, which is going to be on our website. Call, and I'm going to record it actually right after this. What I really think, where it's unfiltered, it won't be public. It'll be only to our members and our members plus. So you got to register as a member, which means you have to give us your name and email address and zip code. This means we know who you are. We're not going to sell it. We're going to send you information from us. Um, and then that will allow you access to this, uh, to this new service called What I Really Think, which is going to be unvarnished, unfiltered, and laid out. And then we're going to do our first Zoom call which is for our Members Plus group. And the reason we're doing this is as a member, we know who you are. We know uh, basically who you are. You could put a fictitious name in and an email address as a member. Um, and at some point, we may have to move everything to a Member Plus because as a Member Plus, you have to, you know, because you're giving us a credit card for $10 a month or whatever, uh, we know who you are. We know you, you have an address that you're a valid human being. You're not a robot or somebody fictitious or, or, or trying to get information. Uh, at least you're spending for it anyway, right? And so that's why we're doing this. So uh, if you want a little bit deeper uh, information about this, um, you can go to what I really think. I'm not sure when it's going to be up. I'm going to film one today, but our, our, our tech guys have to make room for it on our website. So it'll be up soon. Let me just encourage you to, to connect with us. I've been teaching and studying for I've been studying for 40 years. I have a good grasp of eschatology end times. Uh, I have a good grasp of economics and politics, and and I'm a teacher. I'm uncompromised teacher. I lay things out clearly. I don't talk about myself. I teach the Word of God. I just teach it purely from the Word as it's written. Uh, and so my agenda: we give everything away for free. We have all of our curriculum. Everything that we have is free. So when you support us financially, you're supporting the distribution of free content. Curriculums, which means workbooks and DVDs uh, and uh, all, of our, our, all of our information. So listen, it's gonna get, we're going to get into this over the next weeks. So I pray that you would join us, become a member. Uh, also, if you feel led in your heart, become a member plus. Certainly stay tuned. Um, and listen, God bless you. Continue to pray. Uh, continue to push into the Word of God and learn God's Word. I thank you for joining us today.